Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar on hardware in the loop testing for power electronics. My name is Manuel Fedou and I am an application engineer for electrification at Speedcode. So first, let's explain with an example why you need hardware in the loop or HIL for short. Let's say your team is responsible for testing the controller of an inverter and the first inverter controller boards have just been made available for testing. For many teams, the next logic step is connecting this control unit to the physical plant, like a real power inverter and electric load. But this may not be the safest thing to do. When energized, these are dangerous systems, and you might not want to test them with an early stage controller. So you can minimize the risk of damaging equipment by testing your controller with a virtual heel setup first. Then Getting the time with the power lab can be difficult. So when you offload that time to a heel setup, you're benefiting in terms of time and cost. Finally, it is rare that everything lines up the way it was planned. With heel, you are less dependent on hardware lead times and you can test faster and use test automation. So today, as an example of heel testing for power electronics, we will consider a grid tight inverter system and we'll show how to perform testing for a three-phase inverter controller. Using a real-time simulator, running the power converter on an FPGA, and using an interface board to connect to the microcontroller, a C2000 launchpad from Texas Instrument. The simulator enables to simulate the power electronics plant and emulate the sensor signals that we send to the microcontroller, analog inputs, and to the oscilloscope. We also send reference values to the controller via an industry protocol, here can. With this test setup, you make sure that the power electronics controls run stable and you can emulate many test scenarios such as fault safely. The demonstrated solution can be used for many power electronics use cases, for renewable energy integration, besides grid inverter for solar plant, other use cases might be converters for energy storage systems or wind turbines. All these power converters must be thoroughly tested to ensure compliance with grid standards. In the energy sector, another use case for power converter heat testing is power transmission. Typical systems are fax or HVDC converters. Heat testing allows to de-risk development of such high voltage and high power converters. Here is an example of a simulating model for HVDC MMC converter testing. Next, we can mention onboard power converters driven by electrification of automotive, aerospace, and marine systems. The trend towards silicon carbide-based converters leads to new, new control concepts and much higher switching frequencies. Common topologies are DC-DC like the dual active bridge in the picture from Simulink or ACDC converters. Together with onboard power comes power converters for battery charger with topologies such as DAB, resonant converter, like in this Simlink model, or PFC converters. Finally, a very important use case for power electronics heel testing is motor drive. You can find electric motors everywhere, so this could be electric vehicle drives, locomotive drives, industry drives, and many more. Topologies can be two or three level inverters or modular multi level converters. One MassWorks success story for power electronics heel with MassWorks and Speedcode tools is Leonardo DRS building large-scale power electronics systems for propulsion motors. Leonardo DRS used power electronics heel to design and test the power electronics controller. For this, the propulsion motor and power converter were modeled and simulated on a real-time target machine. Because switching effects of the power converter are important for control strategies, the planned model required time steps in the order of microseconds and less. For this, the planned model had to be executed on an FPGA. With HIL, the power electronics controller can be tested against physics-based plant models, including edge case scenarios, without worrying about blowing up equipment. Moreover, this HIL simulator was used as a digital twin of the final system that is used to recreate and troubleshoot issues reported in the field. Now, what exactly do you need to implement a HIL system? There are typically three main components. First, your system under test. This includes the production controller that requires thorough testing and the additional real components 
like domain controllers, sensors, and actuators. Second, a heat test bench, including a real-time simulator where you run a digital twin of the plant together with emulated plant components and IO modules supporting data acquisition, signal conditioning, and communication with the system on a test. Third, a workstation running application software that supports setup and operation of the HIL test bench. This leads us to the key enablers for HIL testing of power electronics. First, we need to simulate the power electronics system. This means the power converter itself, electric circuits, and the environment, such as a solar plant or a battery. Then, we need to interface to hardware through analog and digital signals, power interfaces in the case of power heal, and industry protocols. Finally, we need to integrate testing workflows. We need instrumentation, test automation, and to generate reports. So, today we will cover real-time simulation of power electronics systems, then controller heal and power heal workflows, and finally, test automation. So, our first goal is to simulate power electronics systems in real time. Considering an inverter or any power electronics topology, we can choose different levels of modeling fidelity. An average model for power converter can be great for many applications, such as system level controls. To validate switching events and analyze switching harmonics, we need a switched or subcycle average model of power converters. And when considering switched model, the time step requirements will depend heavily on the switching frequency. The switching frequency depends on the type of power electronics devices used by the converter. It can go from a few hundreds of hertz to hundreds of kilohertz. Note that for capturing some switching dynamics, the sample time of the simulation needs to be several times faster than the switching frequency. So, we need to choose the modeling technique and the simulation technology very carefully depending on the topology, the switching frequency, and the use case. High fidelity switch simulation are great for desktop simulation because you can simulate the dynamics of each power electronics device, like the MOSFETs and the diodes in that simulating model. Also, in desktop simulation, you can use variable step solvers with zero crossing detection. However, this level of fidelity often does not allow real-time simulation. For real-time simulation, we'll consider the following three approaches in today's webinar that cover most hill use cases. First, average simulation, where PWM signals are averaged by one period and where current ripples are not simulated. This can be perfect for control system studies or system level studies. Then, we will look at subcycle average models with averaging over a fraction of one PWM period. If performed on CPU, it allows to simulate the electric network with a time step down to around 15 microseconds and thus capture current ripples for switching frequencies up to around 10 kHz. This is ideal for many thyristor or IGBT based converters such as grid inverters, HVDC converters, and many more. Finally, if performed on FPGA platforms, subcycle average modeling allows time step below 1 microsecond and is ideal for switching frequencies up to hundreds of kilohertz. Let's look at modeling techniques in more details, starting with average value on CPU. For average value, we compute the average value of a PWM signal over a full PWM period. This means that the averaging algorithm delivers a duty cycle between 0 and 1 to the model. The time step of the model is the same or larger than the PWM period. Modeling average system for CPU is easy, as you can find library blocks for average value power converters in Simscape Electrical. PWM signals can be captured with 10 nanosecond resolution using SpeedGod FPGA configurable I.O. modules. The power converter and load models run entirely on CPU at a PWM frequency. You can find reference applications in motor control block set and Simscape Electrical. Here is an example. The PWM frequency is 20 kHz, and the model sampling rate is also 20 kHz. Note that currents are purely sinusoidal, there is no current ripple. Now for subcycle average simulation, the difference 
is that the averaging algorithm runs a few times faster than the PWM period. So we compute a pseudo duty cycle within a fraction of the PWM period. The PWM resolution is still high because the averaging algorithm runs on an FPGA. The model time step TS is a few times smaller than the PWM period TPWM, so this means that the model will simulate a few harmonics. For subcycle average simulations on CPU, options are available in library converter blocks from specialized power systems and Simscape Electrical. Many topologies are available, such as two level, three level inverters and rectifiers, MMC topologies, and many more. This means that you can use the exact same network as for average simulation, but you would choose another modeling option on the two level converter block parameters. As for average simulation, PWM signals can be captured using SpeedGod FPGA configurable IO modules. In comparison with the switched model, subcycle average modeling reduces complexity and achieves smaller time steps, while enabling to capture current ripple and switching dynamics. In this example, we run the model on CPU at 20 kHz, and we can simulate current ripple for a PWM frequency of 2 kHz. Now, let's look at subcycle average modeling but for FPGA deployment. As we have said, this technology enables to simulate switching at higher switching frequencies. It uses the same modeling technique at subcycle average simulation on CPU. It works with the simulating block, as well as with a combination of Simscape Electrical and simulating blocks. Converters can be modeled as a combination of a linear circuit in Simscape Electrical connected to the averaging logic in Simulink. Averaging logic maintains the power balance of the converter inputs and outputs, and this method provides high PWM resolution and switching dynamics simulation for high switching frequencies. In case you have Simscape electrical elements, you need to convert them to a state space description in Simulink before generating HDL code for FPGA deployment. Before using the HDL workflow advisor, you can use the Simscape AGL workflow advisor to obtain the Simulink state space model. This workflow can be challenging, requiring validation and AGL optimization. To illustrate this workflow, let's consider a demo of deploying a Simscape grid type converter model to SpeedGoat IO module. This is based on a shipped example in HDL coder documentation from MathWorks. This example as an implementation of inverter for FPGA deployment that covers bidirectional power flow. Based on this reference application, I have created a similar project because I need capabilities such as kit integration and continuous integration with Jenkins. This is the top model for the sub simulation. It has a controller model that we can use for modeling the loop, and it has this green subsystem, which is the system we are going to deploy to the FPGA. In this system, we have a PWM generator, the plan model, an analog interface that will generate a tax signal, and a frame-based data transfer that will support data logging from the FPGA to the CPU. Going into the green model, we see that we are using Simscape Electrical. We have the control converter itself connected to a DC source on one side, and on the other side to an LCL filter, a breaker, and connected to the grid via a transformer. The converter itself is modeled as a mix of Simscape Electrical and Simulink. The subcycle average model is done in Simulink. Let's look at the implementation for one phase. The averaging algorithm takes the PWM signals as booleans at 5 nanoseconds and averages them, producing a signal in single at 1 microsecond. Here we use the position principle. We sum the voltages from the A on, B on, and A and B off path. The signal is integrated by the SimScale network. Now our goal is to run this system in the FPGA. As we have seen, we need to convert the model to a state-based model. For this, we launch SimScape to HDL workflow advisor on this model. The tool opens and we first run some checks. For example, the Simscape blocks used are compatible. 
we also see some metrics about the SimScape network. Then we can launch conversion. The tool is going to simulate the model while capturing equations and modes. This takes a little bit of time to simulate the model on desktop at 5 nanoseconds. Sample time. So I'm going to cut this video and go to the results. We obtain a state space model with 28 states and two modes because of the breaker. We generate the model containing the implementation model. The model can be opened and inside this model, the SimScape network has been fully replaced by a Simulink implementation. The electric network was replaced by an equivalent state space system. Let's open a rearranged model for the implementation model. We introduced six inputs for the PWM pulses coming from external devices, such as a microcontroller. This is the implementation system we are going to deploy to the FPG. For this, from the top model, we right-click on the FPGA subsystem to start HDL workflow advisor. First, we define and generate code for a speedgoat FPG. Here the IO334 with real plugin 21. Then we define the hardware interfaces. We define the signals going through PCI interface from or to the CPU application. We define our TTL ports, define our tags, define interrupts. The FPGA frequency is set to 180 MHz. We run a few checks for HGL code compatibility and start HGL code generation. HGL code is generated together with the report. Now we start synthesis. Exciting Zivado is called to synthesize the bitstream. Bitstream generation completes after quite a long build time. Next step is to generate the Simulink real-time model. This is a model we can deploy to the real-time target machine. Now the green subsystem is pretty much empty and only contains the interfaces from the CPU model to the FPGA. For example, the setup block defines which bitstream is deployed on the FPGA. Now let's take a real-time model. On the click of a button, we can run the real-time simulation. It's a very short, short simulation, 0.09 seconds. Now we go to the simulation data inspector and inspect the results. We plot phase currents on the top and phase voltages on the bottom, all in per unit system. Here, note that we log the signals with a 1 microsecond resolution that we inspect the current ripple. I have loaded results from a previous simulation on desktop so that we can compare results from desktop and real time. You see that running the plant on the FPGA introduces a delay between the desktop and real time model. However, this is not going to impact closed loop testing when introducing a microcontroller. Now, to show the versatility of the model, Let's change the frequency of the grid to 400 Hz, like for an aerospace power system, and change the switching frequency of the PWM to 100 kHz. We update the parameters in MATLAB's workspace and restart the real-time application. You see that now the grid frequency is 400 Hz compared to the 60 Hz we had before. And if we zoom the phase current, we can see the 100 kilohertz current ripple, which has a small magnitude, but it's simulated accurately. This was an example of Power Electronics circuit connected to an electric network. We will leverage this demo to show how to test the controller in the next section. Please note that you can find electric drives example on the Power Electronics template for Simulink Real-Time MATLAB Central Submission from MathWorks. It contains following topologies, PMSM with two-level inverter, 
PMSM with NPC inverter and induction motor with two level inverter. As hardware platform, we use a performance real time target machine equipped with an IO334 IO module with Kintec 7 FPGA. This is a programmable FPGA IO module with 325,000 logic cells and with 16 DACs with settling time under 1 microsecond. We use HDL coder integration package for built in IO interfaces. So, to wrap up, you can rapidly switch between desktop and real time, choose between different levels of modeling fidelities, and choose between CPU or FPGA based simulations based on requirements. Now, let's see how to leverage our real time models for controller heal. We speak of controller heal to differentiate from power heal, as we will describe in another section. So, if the focus of the heal test campaign is to validate a microcontroller running the power electronics controls, we would call it controller heal. The device in the test is a controller. We simulate the power stage and the electric load. If instead the test focuses on the integration of the full electric equipment, in that case the grid inverter including the controller plus the power stage, we call it power heal. In this case, we only simulate the electric load. For controller heal, we have signal only based interfaces. For power heal, we have power interfaces in addition to signal based interfaces. So a typical controller heal setup for power electronics would be like this. The device in the test is an embedded controller running controls such as current control, voltage control, MPPTT controls, FOC. The controller expects some analog sensor signals such as phase voltages and phase currents and it generates gate signals. Typically, a power electronics controller can also communicate with a supervisory controller using an industry protocol. The first case is having the plan model simulated on the CPU. As we have seen, it can be average or switched simulation. We use an FPGA module to interface with the device in the test. It captures the gate signals and generates analog signals. We can also use an IO module to emulate a supervisory control. For this case, configurable FPGAs allow you to use high frequency IO and lots of protocols without FPGA programming knowledge. There are many code modules represented by Simlink driver blocks, such as PWM capture, analog interfaces, resolver, coder to encoder, or SPI that you can simply drag in your models. And you can configure your FPGA on the fly and directly from Simulink. Speakout provides different configuration files, so you can get the best performance out of the IO module for dedicated applications. FPGAs can also be used to schedule execution of subsystem, the entire real-time application, and individual IO modules, or even to synchronize multiple target computers. Most of the time, Power Electronics controllers also need to interface with other controllers, exchanging information about set points and plan stages, for example. Often, this interface is implemented using an industry specific communication protocol. For this, the HIL test bench can emulate these devices using IO modules. IO modules support most industrial communication protocols for buses and networks. In the case of implementing the Power Electronics model, on the FPGA, which is our demo today, the setup looks like this. The difference is that the plan model is directly implemented on the FPGA. The interface between the CPU and the FPGA application is using direct memory access, or DMA for short. Let's illustrate with a hardware example. So, in our case, we have a speed code performance machine with an IO334 FPGA and an IO611 for CAN. This will be the communication protocol we use for supervisory control communication. We connect to a STI launchpad with an interface board and we use an oscilloscope to measure analog signals. The interface board allows to connect the controller interfaces to the HIL simulator interfaces. Now, from our simulating model, we start the real-time application. The HIL simulation spa starts. In the HIL dashboard, we will have the current and grid voltages in per unit and have some system commands. On the oscilloscope, you can see the phase currents. We can send ID reference values to the controller using the CAN interface. 
enable or disable the PWM generation. On the simulator itself, we can trigger the scenarios such as faults on the inverter. We can trigger short circuits on legs A, B or C, or even trigger the fault simultaneously. To wrap up, use FPGA digital and analog channels to emulate power converter interfaces, leverage industry protocol support, and test your controller as if connected to a real power electronics converter. So now let's move to power heal. Power heal consists in testing electrical equipment with a high voltage interface, like a power amplifier. Speedgoat can support you in building power heal systems. Here is a diagram of a power heal test bench. In the power heal setup, the power amplifier provides a powerful link to the equipment and test that, thanks to its interface algorithm, keeps roughly the same instantaneous power as in the simulation. Speedgoat offers fully customized rack systems for your power heal test bench, including working setups for grid emulation, motor emulation, and battery pack or cell emulation, including selection of suitable power amplifiers from various vendors according to your voltage, power, and bandwidth needs. Let's illustrate power heal. We'll be using power heal to commission a grid tied inverter rated at 15 kVA with a two-level three-phase inverter topology and including an LCL output filter. It is connected to a 50 kVA power amplifier from Synergia, specifically an E plus G and EL capable of syncing and sourcing both alternating and direct currents. It can also act as a voltage source or current source, where G stands for grid emulator and EL stands for electric load. Therefore, it is a four quadrant power amplifier. The larger power amplifiers include a set of voltage and current sensors for each phase that may be accessed via analog channels. We'll use these sensors for this demo. The current or voltage set points are provided also via analog signals. The real-time simulation is handled by a performance real-time target machine with high-speed analog interfaces. It is running a simulating model composed of the rest of the electric system and interface algorithm. We also connected a power analyzer in between the power amplifier and the grid tied inverter. In the simulating model, we have the electric model of the rest of the system on the left, the interface algorithm in the middle, and the analog interfaces to the power amplifier on the right. We've added also an overvoltage protection in case there is an unstable behavior in the model. The CPU-based simulation is running at a sample time of 50 microseconds. It's a good practice to test your interface algorithm connecting the rest of the system with the equipment on a test in desktop simulation prior, prior to power heal testing. For that reason, we use variant models to go between desktop simulation and power heal testing. In the desktop simulation, we have a representation of the equipment on the test. For power heal, we just need analog input and output interfaces to the power amplifier. Let's now run the real-time simulation and enable power heal mode. We deploy the model to the real-time machine on the right. It is running the rest of system in real-time and providing references to the power amplifier. We have set an 80 volt RMS phase voltage for the test. Once we enable the power amplifier, we can see this voltage also in the front panel of the Synergia power amplifier. With our simulation, we can easily start or stop the operation of the power amplifier. When the power heat setup is operational, we'll go to the control panel of the grid tied inverter and carry out the grid synchronization and then test the current controller to provide power to the virtual grid. So to wrap up, you can test power converters and electric equipment with power heat using interfaces to power amplifiers. This can be used to test various power converters, such as grid converters, electric vehicle drives, and battery charger converters. We'll finish this webinar by demonstrating some solutions for automated testing. Let's see how you can implement test cases for real-time testing, 
also repeating test cases from desktop simulation, automate testing, validation, reporting, and leverage continuous integration. Let's see how Simulink Test helps create test cases for real-time execution. You can start the test manager from Simulink Toolstrip. Test manager enables to create your test suite to manage test cases. You can create real-time tests where you define the target machine for real-time execution. You have many ways to author test cases in Simulink Test. For example, you can create baseline tests where you define desired outputs from text or CSV files or from previous runs. You can also create a test where you specify some boundaries for a signal T minus 0.6 to 0.6 per unit for the phase current. Then, Test Manager allows to execute the test suite from the tool or from the command window. Simulink Test also enables to automate test reporting. You can generate reports from Test Manager or via commands. In the report, we see that all tests passed, and for the baseline test, the report contains some documentation where we see that the system output was within a specified tolerance of the expected response. Once your test suites are defined, another step is continuous integration, or CI for short, which automates building and testing of software. A lot of time, a CI workflow starts in your machine, as you are using MATLAB and Simlink to develop controller software, test cases, or plan models. As soon as you commit or push the changes to source control, that will kick off a continuous integration job on a CI server that runs a batch of tests that qualify your contribution to the project and automatically create test reports to tell you what failed. You'll fix the issue, recommit the changes, and that cycle will continue. So this makes controller software development and testing iterations a lot faster and allows you to find bugs right when they get created. Therefore, CI brings key benefits such as repeatability, quality, speed, stronger collaboration and integration, and finally, better traceability and documentation. MATLAB and Simulink can help you with many of the CI tasks. For instance, you can use source controls within your projects. Quickly track, compare and qualify changes quickly visualize and report results of your automated testing. You also benefit from integration with the main CI platforms like Jenkins, GitLab or Azure DevOps. And all can be orchestrated to work with hardware and complement your hill testing workflows. Let's now conclude this webinar with a few takeaways. You can use different level of simulation fidelity and various technologies for testing power electronics components and systems in real time. Interface with controllers or electrical equipment and automate and integrate testing. And you benefit from an integrated workflow from end to end in Simulink. Many thanks. You want to learn more about real time controls testing? Then find additional content linked here.